This wind certainly highlights the issue here. Snow and blowing snow layer on top of layer contributing to the avalanche danger. All time, amazing. It's just really awesome, super deep. Feels like you're flying. Finally, the snow has come in for backcountry skiers. It's it's amazing. It's we've been waiting for snow for for months now. So now it's great that we're finally getting getting dumped on a little bit. But for those seeking fresh tracks like Jake Winter, they know to stay off the ridges on days like today. We call it side country here, and what you want to just stay in the main line. So if you stay from that backcountry sign there, then you just stay in the trees and go right to the switchback. It's pretty safe because a lot of people do it. Sida is utilizing new technology called Gazex gas compression systems already implanted in certain avalanche prone areas of the high country to trigger slides before the skiers do. We monitor actually over 50 plus slide areas throughout the state. But even with that constant monitoring, the risks are great. We have that risk, whether it's avalanche or rockfall or the other, that always exists in a mountain environment. It really does require people to be more careful. For these guys, safety is a priority. I ride with a bunch of friends who are pretty familiar with it, so this is my first season out here, but I'm pretty experienced with skiing, so I know where to be careful and where not to be. No, before you go. They do these free avalanche classes all the time. Take advantage of them. There's a lot to learn. Um, we go to them every year, even just as refreshers, just to kind of remind us about snowpack, weather. On Loveland Pass. Unbelievable. The best stuff you'll find. Russell Haythorn for the now Denver. In the hallways, there's nothing strikingly different about it. Kids in uniform chatting briefly, then rushing off to beat the next bell. But duck inside any one of the classrooms here, and you notice immediately. Pero vamos a definirlo primero. That striking difference. It's amazing. The Denver Language School is DPS's first and only total immersion language school. Our classes are pretty normal except for the fact that we don't use English. <laughs> Students K through 8 learn almost exclusively in Spanish or Chinese. When we switch that language, something comes alive. It has its challenges. <laughs> I know, right? But co-founder Camilla Modisette has always been one to embrace challenge. It's her belief this was long overdue. When you put a second language in their brain at a young age, you're really building a better brain. If test scores are any indication of that, she's right. DLS has the second highest math scores in DPS, and the chess team here is second in the nation. We want kids to be able to fully engage in life in another language. By the time they reach eighth grade, like this group, they have some pretty lofty expectations of themselves. I would really like to open a cultural center. Potentially, I could become like an ambassador for the United States of America, going over to China, translating for a president. Or be the president, for that matter. I know English, Spanish, and Chinese. We have the opportunity that most kids don't usually have. A 21st century teaching model. A difference maker producing some of the most promising minds among us. Slope. The sky is the limit. With the amazing kids at Denver Language School, I'm Russo Denfochi. Zaijian. Welcome to Denver, the craft beer mecca of the Mountain West. We release one new beer every week. A place where you hardly need a reason to drink. I like happy hour. <laughs> Yet visit Denver and organizers of Oktoberfest are giving you every reason to do so this weekend. We've been pretty excited. Garlic beer bratwurst, all beef hot dogs. Denver Beer Fest and Oktoberfest this weekend are both a prelude, an opening ceremony, if you will, for the 35th Annual Great American Beer Festival on tap for next weekend. 50,000 beer connoisseurs from around the country and around the world. That's about 3,300 gallons. Kevin Selvey is the owner of Crazy Mountain Brewery. <laughs> We basically will brew something once and never again. Selby says this weekend's events offer a kickoff to the main event next weekend. This next 10 days is about the busiest uh, 10 days in the beer industry in general, especially if you're a 
a brewery in Denver. So welcome to the Mile High City, where craft beer is on tap on virtually every street corner. Festivals rule the streets the next few weekends, and you can even catch the mayor throwing back a few swigs before noon. Denver really kind of comes to life in, uh, in the fall. It's cool, we like it. It's good beer and people are really friendly. For Colorado farmers, it's a problem. Mother Nature can be cruel. Wow. And the road to success can be long and slick. They're no longer marketable after a freeze. Vegetable grower Dave Petraco. Let me find one here that's, that's ready to go. Says this red cabbage is hardy. It will likely survive the freeze. There's a hit of a, a red cabbage right there. That's red cabbage? It's ready to eat. But many other veggies will suffer a much more cruel fate to this early season snow, nine days ahead of the average first snowfall. Peppers, uh, hard squash, uh, soft squash, uh, green beans, uh, one, uh, one freeze and they're gone. All the moisture in this snow isn't good either. These onions, for example, this particular field would be on store shelves in a few days. But because it's so muddy, crews won't be able to access this field for another week or so if the onions survive the frost at all. In the produce section, that means you and I will likely be paying higher prices soon for veggies shipped in from other parts of the country. When one area loses product, uh, another area has to furnish that supply. And if they don't have enough, the price goes up. Petraco typically harvests until Halloween. Of the 3,000 acres of produce they grow, roughly 800 acres are still in the ground. So we do have seasonal uh, employees, and uh, uh, we're going to miss. They're going to miss work. Uh, we're going to miss production, and uh, so it's a, uh, it's something that we didn't wish for. A long and difficult road. They're muddy. But one Colorado farmers have grown accustomed to. Well, it's a high risk business and it, it always has been and uh, it always will be. In Brighton, Russell Haythorn for the Now Denver. Yeah, it could mean a flood of people leaving our state for greener pastures, so to speak. But in terms of how much you pay for something like this, most experts agree that's likely not going to change. A new cash crop that came to Colorado in 2014 is about to be legal in the country's most populated state. Tons of people, tons of people smoke weed, so. So California could be the new promised land for legal weed. I think it's definitely gonna move people out there for sure. Experts say it's already evident. Tens of thousands of poppreneurs are rushing to the Golden State to carve out a slice, which could take some of them away from Colorado. I do think over time, a lot of the people that moved here from California will you know, try to pursue the same industry back at home. Adam Segalis runs Loto Wellness. He says we'll definitely see less migration to Colorado from California. They're not going to be as tempted to, you know, leave the state. Justin Henry moved to Colorado from Georgia. Now that it's beginning to show up in other states, I think it's more of just a pick and choose where you want to go and live, basically, at this point. But if you're expecting the price of weed to come down, with California coming online next week, Segalis says don't get your hopes up. In Las Vegas, for example, an ounce of legal pot costs almost triple what it does here. The price is almost, you know, black market times two. So it is more expensive out there than even out here. It kind of stays within the border of the state. California will now be the sixth state in the nation to sell recreational marijuana. It joins Colorado, Washington, Oregon, Nevada, and Alaska. In Loto Wellness Center, Russell Haythorn, Denver 7.